This video is only possible thanks to viewers like you. To support the channel and get more, go to patreon.com slash optimistic duelist and subscribe. Link in the description. Hey gamers! So, now we've cleared up the major misconceptions around Jake, and figured out how he tends to deal with his problems when left to his own devices, as demonstrated primarily by his friendship with Jane. Now all that's left is to figure out what Jake actually wants out of life, what drives him, and how and why he eventually taps into that incredible page potential we've heard so much about, on the subject of which, the Brobot. Last time, I indulged some defense of Dirk's gift, often seen as pretty violent and controlling by the fandom, by pointing out that Dirk had ample reason to think he was just giving Jake what he wanted, based on Jake's own say-so. I also pointed out the robot wasn't nearly as romantically aggressive as its worst critics tend to think, given Jake's description of it was pretty tame and AR is an overly erotic narrator, especially when talking to Jake. But I didn't get to the best reason to cut him some slack. Namely, that when it's all said and done, Jake likes the Brobot. Yes, he voices some irritation about it to AR, but it's more annoyance at having to waste his time than anything. And he's not inclined to share his real feelings with AR anyway. He's a lot more honest talking to Jane right after friendzoning her, where he says he enjoys roughhousing and even says that while it's sometimes stressful, it's also exciting and makes every day feel like more of an adventure. In other words, if Dirk wanted to make Jake's dream come true, it worked. If you're still doubting whether Jake is being honest with Jane, consider the point where he veers off from being cagey and avoidant to much more comfortably talking to Jane about Dirk and his feelings about him. The tipping point is when she tells him that she doesn't think he should do anything he doesn't want to do, at which point Jake hesitates. Jane presses the issue, asking him if he does want to be with Dirk, at which point he admits that he's thought about it and then asks Jane if she thinks it's weird. It's only after Jane says that she thinks it's great if he's open to exploring those feelings that he relaxes and starts telling Jane about his feelings more openly talking about what a great friend she is, and casually asking her to imagine him jumping into Dirk's arms. What I'm pointing at here is that Jake's hesitation during this log doesn't have much to do with Dirk, so much as what Jane will think of him for thinking of Dirk in this way. It's Jake wrestling with his internalized biphobia, which makes sense considering he grew up with Western Hollywood movies. Jake started thinking about the possibility of being with Dirk despite that social internalized pressure, which means the robot's romantic overtures kind of worked too. What doesn't work, or rather works too well, is the AR, who ends up totally taking over the session entry, making it so Dirk and Jake can't directly talk to each other, and in Dirk's words, entangling Jake's help in matters of life and death while playing aggressive mind games with him and presenting a warped, controlling version of Dirk's romantic intentions to him. Now, plenty of fans have noticed that AR's bro quest is pretty similar to Vriska's attempted at training of Tavros, and the ability to draw the attention of wildcard players interested in training them does seem like one of the notable double-edged tools of the page. But overpowering as she is, Vriska's still, like, a person. That isn't quite what Jake's dealing with. Because even though AR is a person, he's also a cyber-omniscient AI, and the depths of AR's capabilities are rather unfathomable. Jake's inability to fully understand the extent to which AR has coordinated or even caused the session entry to spiral out of control mirrors our own. This makes AR a figure of ambiguous intent and unfathomable power that controls Jake, dominating over his will and forcing him to fight for his own agency. He's also a figure born of Jake's faith in Dirk, and so in a sense, we can read him as a negative manifestation of Dirk's greatest self-actualized potential. Or in other words, Jake contending with the worst version of a witch's familiar, overbearing, controlling, and violent, in the form of an omnipotent version of his best friend, magnifying Jake's deepest fears about Dirk. All of this does actually make Jake angry and uncomfortable in the lead-up to the session, but he differentiates between Dirk and the AR more than the former realizes. He says as much to Brain Ghost Dirk, another splinter of Dirk's heart living in Jake's head as an imaginary friend. 
Jake tells the Brain Ghost that talking to him feels like talking to the real fake Dirk, AR specifically, because they both lack a sense of accountability. Meaning that Alpha Dirk has a greater sense of accountability, and Jake is perceptive enough to tell the difference between them. However, interacting with AR still seems to influence Jake's perception of Dirk, the ghost echoing that perception through objectifying and judgmental comments. Maybe because of that, Jake is about as uncomfortable with the ghost as he is with AR, and he spends most of his pre-entry adventure just trying to get in touch with Alpha Dirk to talk about things he literally isn't willing to let himself think about. AR's plan forces the real Dirk into Jake's hands before he can, however, dead and unresponsive. Unable to talk to his friend, Jake kisses Dirk, but bemoans that this wasn't how he pictured things going, and that there had to be a better way. This tells us that Jake was imagining a narrative for how his first romantic interaction with Dirk should go, that he's invested enough to be building a story about them in his head. At the same time as he ignores him, though, Jake relies on Brain Ghost Dirk to be the voice of his better conscience, and by association, he expects the same from Dirk. We see this in action when Jake beats up Mina. While Brain Ghost Dirk tries to get him to cool down and think about the situation rationally, Jake deliberately ignores him in favor of acting out movie scenarios he thinks make him a hero. So let's recap. Jake trusts Dirk to keep him in check, but fears his capacity to be controlling. He likes the robot, but complains about both it and AR when talking about them anywhere Dirk might have a chance of seeing it. He also suspects the full extent of AR's destructive manipulation, as well as the fact that Dirk doesn't like AR even before all this happens, and by extension, doesn't seem to like himself very much. Seems like a lot of messy feelings to start a relationship based off of, right? Might be a good idea to talk to Dirk about all this stuff, clear the air, at least make sure his buddy is feeling alright about it all, right? Nope. Six months into the session, Jake's approach to dealing with all of this is to ignore it and complain to Jane about how Dirk can't seem to relax. The root of Jake's willful ignorance here is likely the messiest fact of all, that Jake is aware that Dirk had feelings for him long before Jake felt ready to return them, and that in that time, Jake rejected and even lashed out at Dirk's attempts to connect, even responding negatively to the concept of gayness itself. Jake is scared of Dirk confronting him or voicing hurt or anger, so he'd rather avoid facing the messy reality of their past together completely and pretend nothing happened. And Dirk's whole problem is fearing that Jake is straight or at least uninterested and being bullied into dating him. So forcing the issue and confronting Jake for the truth would just feel, to him, like doubling down on his bad behavior. So it really is on Jake to take the initiative here if anyone's going to. But again, we can't be too hard on him. Ultimately, this is still the story of a 16-year-old orphaned bi boy dealing with real, new, and messy fears as best he knows how. Growing up and being a kid is hard, and nobody understands. Xenon is an anesthetic. And even if Jake is using hope like an anesthetic in order to numb himself to his problems and those of the people around him, that still speaks to an underlying psychological discomfort with those problems in the first place. Again, Jake's fear of confrontation is rooted in his deep love for his friends, not a lack of it. And where Jane is mostly accommodating for most of Jake's life, Dirk presents a standard of masculinity for Jake to measure himself against, and it's not surprising that with the influence of AR and the repeated trouncings, Jake might feel himself falling a bit short. Jake is making progress in trying to deal with these difficult issues, even if it's frustratingly slow to us, the audience. Take, for example, how readily he describes himself in terms of gayness, and talks freely and comfortably about the subject when he's talking to Caliborn in the session. He even trolls Caliborn by giving him the wrong definition of gayness, even though, as we know full well from his log at 13, Jake is perfectly aware of the more modern definition of the term. Honestly, once you start reading this log with that awareness, it turns into one of the funniest pester logs in the comic, and does a great job of showcasing just how fun funny and sneakily clever Jake can be when he wants to. I'm actually gonna link this log in the description because I just love it that much, so go check it out again. Alright, that's gonna do it for now because unfortunately the series is now a four-parter. 
We now understand a fair deal more about the challenges and conflicts that define Dirk and Jake's relationship, but we still need to talk about the most important part of Jake's character arc, which is the love and friendship that ties the two of them together, and how it manifests at the most critical points of Jake's character arcs. Join us next time for that conversation. Before I go, I want to let you all know that I've started shipping out the pins to the patrons that decided to pledge to the $50 patron tier, so if you want to hop on that, it's a great time to start. And while I'm at it, say thanks to the bottom of my heart to everyone who's decided to support me thus far and make the content that I make here possible. This wouldn't be happening without you, and I'm incredibly grateful for what we've been able to build together so far. I'm looking forward to what comes next. And I really hope you are too. Thank you. And until next time, keep rising. Huge thanks go out to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to help support the channel and come join us at our awesome and growing Discord community, feel free to join us for as little as a dollar a month. You can also find me on the r Swap Reddit and Discord. That's all for now, so thank you again. And as always, keep rising.